How's it going guys? This problem came from the problem request form. Uh, Bob Joe requested it. A funny thing though, I, I made this form and I thought that Google was going to send me an email whenever somebody, you know, filled out an entry on the form and a couple weeks went by and I didn't get any emails. I was finally like, man, I guess no one wanted to do the problem request form. So I went to go look at it, the document, and there's like 20 entries on it that I didn't even know were there. So uh, this one was put out on January 20th by Bob Joe. I'm just getting to it now. It is the 2019 AMC 10B Problem 23, which was also the 12B Problem 20. Um, just for the record, when I solved this problem on my own, I was doing it during a session where somebody had asked the question uh, in a tutoring session. And, you know, I had gotten a lot of the pieces created, but I didn't have time to sit there staring at it, trying to think of the next thing. So I did have to glance at the solution, and this was from Solution 1 on the AOPS wiki. And, I, again, I had had the pieces created, but, uh, you know, I couldn't remember some key part or something like that. So I'm sharing with you what that solution says in greater detail because I felt like it was the best solution. There are other solutions on there that you are welcome to use. So again, it's the 2019 AMC 10B Problem 23, which was also the 12B Problem 20. I will get to problem requests as soon as I am able. I've got a lot of other requests that aren't on there, so it's going to slow me down a little bit. Points A, 613, and B, 1211, lie on a circle omega. It looks like W though, right? I mean, it's a lowercase omega in the original problem, but with my marker, well, almost lost it. With my marker, I can't quite draw Greek letters, but the Greeks don't care if you call it W, right? So the circle W in the plane. Suppose that the tangent lines to W, circle W, at A and B, intersect at a point on the x-axis. Okay, we're kind of losing track of what's going on probably this point. Let's make sense by adding the points to a diagram. Um, we know they're both first quadrant points. Let's target the first quadrant. We'll say 613's about here and maybe 1211's over here. Um, other thing too, don't worry too much about accurate, you know, hash marks and stuff like that. Get a general idea of what's going on. Super accurate drawings, and you also don't have graph paper anymore going forward, are going to be time consuming. Okay, so we'll have some kind of tangent line. I don't even have the circle drawn, right? So maybe something like, I don't know, uh, this and then maybe uh, this, something like that. Okay, so we'll erase that part of the line. I'll wash my fingers off the marker later. Okay, so what's going on here? What does the circle look like? We don't really know. It's going something like this. Right, something like that. Okay, and it's got a little extra up here. Okay, now it's gone. No more problems. All right, so we don't know what's going on here with this circle. We got circle omega. That's the center. Uh, circle W, whatever you want to call it. And we know these points. This is A. 6, uh, 13, and this is B, 12, 11. All right, so now there's going to be a couple of green light goes in this problem. What is a green light go? The green light go is because you've trained your mind to have an instantaneous response to a stimulus. And in this problem, there's two. These are instant reactions. You do them right away. Okay, so when your mom or you, perhaps even, is at a stoplight, and the light goes green, you don't think, well, most of, most of us don't think, oh, I should go now, it's green. No, you just go. It's like you can do it absentmindedly while you're on your phone when you shouldn't be. But you, you know what happens, right? You just go, okay? It doesn't require a lot of thought. This is the same thing with this. There's going to be a stimulus, the green light, and then you're going to go. And in this case, what are those two things? The first one is this. If they're meeting at one point on the x-axis, I'm going to call that point C, and it will be located at C comma zero. The distance from this point to those points is equal. That is nothing more than power of a point. It's common ge geometry knowledge. Um, and so the distances from a point outside of a circle to the points of tangency, two different points of tangency are equal, okay? So because of that, what they're meeting at one point, you're probably supposed to use that. So why don't we go ahead and try to find out you know, what's going on there. Um, if I call this D and D, and I want to find what those distances are. Let's go ahead and do that. So 11 minus 0 uh, is going to be 11 squared. And then you're going to have plus uh, 12 minus C squared. 
12 minus c squared, that's the x2 minus x1. This is going to equal uh, 13 minus 0 is 13 squared plus 6 minus 13 squared, or 6 minus c squared. Now, you might say, where's the square root? Well, this doesn't really matter, does it? We're about to square both of these so that we can solve the equation for c. We just took the distances and set them equal. Pretend there was a square root if you want, and then pretend that you removed it. And so that's what you do with that. On the test, any kind of time savings that you can get by not showing work for things like that, all those seconds are crucial in getting you to your goal, which is as many questions as possible answered. So once we've done that, this will be 169 plus 36 minus 12c plus c squared equals 121 plus 144 um, minus 24c plus c squared. Knock the c squareds off first, that's good. I'm gonna move the 144 over here off the 169 to get 25. That gives me 61. I'm gonna move it right back over here by subtracting 61 and you're gonna get 60. Now it says 60 minus 24c equals negative 12c. I will move the 24c over here to get 12c, divide by 12 to get c equals five. Now that we know it's five, let's just get rid of it because there's not really any reason to keep it there anymore. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we said these distances were equal. <laughs> Why don't we find them, right? I mean, it's not that hard. They're right here. Don't forget they're inside of a square root. You know, so if I put the 5 in here, 6 minus 5 is 1, squared is 1, plus 169 is root 170. And again, I'm going to get rid of these d values now because we no longer care that they were once called d. And in fact, it frees up d to be used for some other distance if I want in the problem. All right, what next? Well, we said there was two green light goes. What's the other one? If you have a circle and they mention tangent lines, you should be instantaneously thinking about the 90 degree angle that's created when you connect the radius to the point of tangency. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to go here and here. This will be 90 and this will be 90. And those are both radii. And in fact, we're looking for the area of circle W or omega, whatever you want to call it. And that's going to be pi r squared. So we kind of have a clear goal now. We need to find the radius. Oh, that's simple enough. Um, how? Well, we have another green light go now. And that green light go, because we root, drew, uh, drew these 90 degree symbols, we probably should be thinking, hey, 90 plus 90 is 180. Does that have any special meaning? Yes, it does. It means this quadrilateral uh, is going to be cyclic. And as a cyclic quadrilateral, look it up. I'm not going to establish this proof right now in the middle of this problem. But if opposite angles add up to 180 in a quadrilateral, it is cyclic. First off, you know the sum is 360. So these add up to 180. Guaranteed these do also. So it, because of that, it will be a cyclic quadrilateral. There's plenty of proofs online. You can Google search that. Um, and why do we care that it's cyclic? What does cyclic mean again? If you're not sure, cyclic... Uh, it just means that you could draw a circle that passes through all points. You could uh, circumscribe a circle around the quadrilateral. But more importantly, once we see the word cyclic in our mind, we are thinking, hopefully, if you're more experienced, of this guy. Uh, that's an M. Uh, come on. Let's try and write someone nice, I guess. Ptolemy's. Ptolemy's theorem. Okay? And so Ptolemy's theorem, what is it? Well, it's for cyclic quadrilateral specifically. Once you saw this, you should immediately go, oh, I wonder if I can use Ptolemy's. That should be right away. It's like, a again, a green light go, a trigger, okay? So because it's Ptolemy's, what does Ptolemy say? You should definitely add this to your small notebook. It says the sum of the products of opposite sides. The sum of the products of opposite sides. Um, let's make some space here. We know C equals five. It's R times root 170. And then the other r times root 170, you're adding those. So 2r root 170, what does it equal? It's equal to the product of the diagonals. Try not to remember formulas in terms of the little letters. Memorize them in terms of the concepts. I like to write the words, the sum of the products of opposite sides. This side is opposite to this one, this one to that one. The sum of those is equal to the product of the diagonals.
right? You will remember the worded phrase much better than you will the symbols. Okay, um, so then we're going to need the diagonals, aren't we? Well, how are we going to get this one? It is the hypotenuse of a right triangle in which I know both of these, so while I might not know what it is exactly, I can state it in terms of r and 170. And it's just going to be uh, the square root of r squared plus 170. Basically, your a squared plus your b squared square rooted is your c. Okay? Um, thanks, Pythagorean. Uh, and so then what? We also need another diagonal, but where is it? Well, it's not drawn. Just you can draw it if you need to, right? It's going to connect these two points A and B that we know. Well, let's just find their distance. 13 minus 11 um, is going to be 2 squared is 4 plus 6 minus 12, negative 6 squared, 36, square root of 40. Okay, so 40 is 2 root 10. Let's get rid of that. I'm going to take the 2 and knock off this 2. I'm going to divide by root 10 to get r root 17 equals this. Okay, so you've got this equal to this, and we're clearly going to have to square both sides here. You're going to get 17 r squared equals r squared plus 170. Move the r squared over, get 16 r squared equals 170. Immediately divide by 16. Divide by 2 now to get 85 over 8. So r squared, 85 over 8. What do we want? Pi r squared. Slap a pi on the edge of that, get c, win a prize. That's how it works. A lot of inferences have to be drawn. And you're on problem 23, or problem 20 if you were on the 12b. You probably don't have massive amounts of time yet. You need to have these things trained that when you see a circle with a tangent line, 90 degrees, instantly, right? When you see a point of tangency outside of a circle, first thought, if I connect the two pieces of tangent lines, right, the, the tangent segments, if you will, they are equal in length, and you have to think of it right away. Another one that's like that, if you have two circles and they're like tangent to each other, connect their centers. It's stuff like that. You want to write these kinds of thoughts in the small notebook. It's not just the formula. It's you drawing the inference from situations in the problem. You can write it in a sentence, right? You could say, you know, if you have, you know, just draw a picture. If um, circle, tangent, radius, then you write then and draw the same circle, tangent, radius, 90 degrees, right? You don't, here's the then, there's the picture. You don't have to put it in words. You can put it in images. Your brain thinks in images just fine. If you want to write words, you can. You write it whatever best way is for you. And that's going to help you to have the green light go thought at the moment you need it during the test. Okay, I hope this helps you guys. You have a good night. I'll see you in the next one.